Hi, and welcome to the fourth tutorial in the Python, Pandas, and Spreadsheets tutorial series. In the last tutorial, we did a lot of code cleanup. We organized our code into several different definition files. And then at the very end of the code, we just outlined a few variables, variable names. We used our one definition to read the spreadsheet, and it returned the stats, years, and DFS. We verified that, that it did indeed return that. So in this tutorial now, we're going to uh, we're going to do a few things first uh, based on some suggestions that I got, and then we're going to uh, we're going to figure out how to read this spreadsheet. We're going to modify some things so that we can uh, organize the data. Now we're going to do a little actual data analysis. So we've got all this data, and that's great. But maybe you know maybe what we want to do is pick a team and see what their batting average has been like from whatever this first year, 1960 or 54 up to 2019. Let me see how their batting average has changed over time. So that's what we'll do. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go all, all the way up to the get data from website. Even though we're not using this here, uh, I, was, I was informed that you do not have to declare your variable as a string. That this uh, fstring method will automatically do that for you. And so I just wanted to let you know that so that now when it's when it looks for a year, even though it's an integer, it will automatically render that as a string in the f string here. So there's change number one. All right. So now when we read our Excel spreadsheet into a database, we're going to be using that function again today. Um, however, there's a I'll, I'll show you there's there's going to be a column that we we don't care about, and that may happen to you in the future. And so. I'll show you a technique that you can you can change this definition, or you could make a, a side a definition that's got a slightly different name, so that you can read the spreadsheet without and ignore maybe a column you don't care about. And so, if we if we go over here, um, well, let's I say, why don't we just run our script? It's going to take it a second, but it should render uh, stats, years, and DFS at the end. Uh, so that we can use that in this um, pane over here. I've also done a few changes to the the style here that you you, you see on the screen. I, I've wrapped the lines on the side with the scripting, so you'll see that those lines are getting wrapped around. Uh, just playing with that to see if I like prefer that rather than having to scroll all the way over all the time to see the text. So this should end up with something here in just a second. And it is surprising how long it takes, but uh, it should just be reading our spreadsheet from last time. Okay, so let's see what we have. If, if I hit stats, it should come up with all those things. There we go, yep. So those are all the different um, data frames stored into that stats uh, dictionary. So um, we've got that in there now. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change this uh, read Excel sheet into database. We're going to make a, a little modification of that so that at the end here we're going to use another keyword. And we're going to say use calls equals. And just as in, in Excel spreadsheets, you know the first column is A, the second column is B, and so on. And as you get to Z, you start with A, 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 B, A, C, and so on. And so uh, for the number of columns that all of these spreadsheets have, we're going to say use columns B colon, and I think I've written AE here. So that should cover all of the columns used. It may even go past the last column, um, but it won't, it won't record an empty column. So it'll just record everything that, that we can see. So all that will do is ignore column A, right? If we're starting with column B, we're ignoring column A. And the reason that we would want to do that, if we look back over here, is that we have this one column that I'll highlight here. It says unnamed. That's our that's our column A. And if I open up, if I go to open office calc, if I open up this file, the baseball stats file, when we render this file initially, 
we allowed it to render this index here, right? Starting with zero, going up to, in this case, 17. It has no heading up here. Then when we turn and we read from the spreadsheet, it reads this column as if it's data because it, we didn't tell it otherwise. So by telling it to start with column B, we're, we're telling it in this case to start with the data we care about. There's another way we could have handled this differently by writing the file with no index. And I may show you how to do that in a, in a future session. Um, but for now, I'm going to close that just so that there's no, uh, not two programs trying to use it at the same time. It might get confusing or something. OK. So if we scroll back down here, um, sorry about all that. OK. So now we've, we're going to rerun this so that we're starting with column B. And that's just, a, a, again, a style thing. So we don't have a column that's just called unnamed that's got the index in there. And that's all fine. And so if I run this again, it's going to take another amount of time. But we'll, we, I can show you if I, again, print out the uh, stats dictionary, it should show you all the columns. And that one that says unnamed will not be there anymore. And so after that runs, the second thing we're going to do now is, is what I said at the beginning. We want to create a new data frame. And we're going, we want to go through each of the, all the data that we have stored in our stats dictionary. And we want to create a new spreadsheet at the end of this that contains you know, all the stats for one team. And we might even try to append to that since in previously we had the year listed we could maybe add the year as a column in that in that uh, in the new data frame we're going to create all right so if i s hit stats it's going to dump the whole dictionary but now you can see um, it and did it do it yeah right so it doesn't have the um, the first the first index here is team and that's these three letter names. I don't know why it's moved off to the side like that. But uh, I'm fairly confident that that's still rendered as the team. And we can just, we could, we could say year equals 1963. We'll say stats year, right? So there's one. And we'll say stats year dot uh, tm and that indeed gives a list of all the different teams okay so if I hadn't showed you that before that that dot method is a way of, of you know getting a calling out a single column from your data frame all right so to do what we want to do what we want to do is we want to loop through all of those data frames that we've stored and then we want to pick out just the row that has the team we're interested in. So to, to choose a team that's going to have been there for all the different years we're looking at, I'm going to create a new value. I'm going I'm to say column value. And you'll see why I name these things this in a second. Column value equals, and we'll say NY, I'm sorry, NYY, New York Yankees. Okay. I'm sure that people have strong feelings about those that team and we'll say column name equals TM all right so we're saying the column name that we want is team the column value we want is New York Yankees and just ahead of this in fact we'll create a new data frame new data frame equals PD which is our pandas import dot data frame open close parentheses so we have an empty data frame that we're creating okay we, we've chosen the column value and the column name um, now we can say so now we want to loop through all of the years from our stats dictionary so we say for year and years stats year well in fact let me do a little more um, I'm gonna do a little more naming convention stuff just so that when we sh when I show you how to pick out the row you want, you have uh, a really clear picture of the the, the syntax you want to use. So we're going to say data frame df equals uh, stats year. Oh. All right. 
we're making a few extra definitions just to make it a little cleaner. So then the row we want, row will equal df dot loc, L-O-C, that's the method we're using. We have to use a square bracket. And what we put inside this is df and column name and then equals, double equals rather, column value, okay? So, and all of that is inside this one big set of square parentheses. So we're saying d data frame locate the data frame column name where the column name equals the column value. So we're, it's, it's saying look in that row, find that column value. And what it will return then is that row. Um, so th that is sufficient. And then now let's say we want to add add to that row. That row will be a data frame with just one row in it. We want to add to that data frame the year. And so the way that I've been shown to do this is to say row, open up a parenthesis and we'll say, so you're, you're supposed to add both the index the and the column name. Um, so the way to do that is to say colon and then comma. So colon is just saying add this to the end of the at, at the end of the data frame. And then the comma, then we want to give it a heading of year, right? And that should be equal to the actual year. So that should add to our row. And then finally we want to append to our new data frame. So we want to say new data frame equals and I don't understand why we have to do it this way, to be honest. But this is the way. If I didn't do it this way, I was getting errors before. So, so we're saying new data frame equals new data frame dot append. We're appending the row, and we need to add this little keyword here: ignore underscore index equals true. Okay. So that will do it for us, and it's going to throw us an error if we do it this way, but I want to show you that error so I can show you how to avoid the error. And again, this is maybe unfortunate, but this is rerunning our program, so every time it's going to be reading that big long, uh, the big spreadsheet file, and each time it reads that spreadsheet file, it takes it a rather, you know, a fairly long time to read it. Number of seconds. We've gotten really impatient as a culture, I think. You know, when, uh, computer time, 10 seconds have gone by. But it's true. We want things done now. Why can't it do it faster? I don't know. So it's running, it's chugging along, it's doing something. It hasn't given me any errors yet. But I know a, uh, an, a warning is coming, I would I venture to guess. Oh, all right. It is an error, in fact. And what was the error here? Um, row year equals year. Ah, OK. So that was that was written incorrectly. I should have written row dot loc colon comma year equals year. So that was just a mistake, um, and that's unfortunate. Something we can do here, since we have this this frame and we know that we've we've rendered stats correctly, we can copy all of this text and we can paste it in here, where we know stats exists the way we expect it to exist. And then we can run this. This should be much faster. And we'll have to hit enter twice. All right, so there is the warning that I was expecting to find the first time. And it says try using dot loc row indexer column indexer equals value, which is exactly what I did, actually. But somehow, to suppress this warning, what it, what it, what's happening is that it's saying you're, you're setting with a copy, the setting with copy warning. You're 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 changing. You're you're taking a slice of something and then changing it, and so uh, to to tell Python that you are okay with that, you can simply just add this. When you make the row, you can say dot copy, open close parenthesis, and so that says now instead of this row being the slice, it's now a copy of the slice from the original data frame. And if we if we run it that way, if I rerun this, where at the very beginning I'll be creating, I'll be just emptying my data frame. Right, we'll run this again. 
and it ran without any um, warning that time. Okay, and now we can look and see new underscore data frame, and we hit enter. It has 66 rows, one for each year, and it's the team. It's l rendered in every one is just the NYY New York Yankees, and uh, here at the end. It has year as 1954.0 for, for whatever reason it said I'm gonna call it a float and that's fine I don't have a problem with that and we could we could have declared it an int and we probably still could um, but I'm not bothered about that right now so to sum up what we've done we have taken our our data frame we have taken a slice from each of our 66 different data frames all with the same team name and we have then created a new data frame with that team so that we could you know maybe do look at how their batting average changed over time uh, with at the risk of this uh, tutorial getting a little too long I'm gonna um, try to attempt a plot now down here if I can find the end all right there we are so we'll say import map plot lib dot pi plot as plt and we'll say plt dot plot and so we want an x and a y value so our x value should be um, new data frame dot years or year I think I called it that's our x and then new our y value new data frame dot bat edge which is what it was called when we first pulled it down and there it plotted it now again and normally you would have to fo have a follow-up call where you'd say plot dot show uh, it says figures now render in the plots pane by default so that's some feature of this spider IDE but we have a, a relatively nice looking plot over here this goes from 1954 to 2019 and you know it looks like uh, batting average incre increases with global temperature or something we could make a correlation who knows we obviously have a, a big deficit here in what would I suppose is 2018 and, uh, and not much to show in 2019 but on average this thing does seem to be increasing in some linear fashion so thank you for watching this tutorial let's go around and watch the next one